After so many of you have requested it, today's video is going to be the start of a brand new series, building a fully functional website inside Wix Studio. Each episode, we're going to build up the site more and more, starting with the first few sections on the homepage and finishing off with a fully functional website. The website that we're going to be building is going to be called Availabled. It's for an app that one of my clients is currently developing. It's all a work in progress. We've already got some great branding and some imagery that we can use to build up the site. So let's hop into Wix Studio and let's start building. So for those of you who haven't heard of Wix Studio, Wix Studio is a great tool for designers and developers to build fantastic interactive websites that can also be really easily delivered to your clients alongside any other sort of collaterals. So brand guidelines, logos, it makes it really straightforward to communicate with your clients, hand over projects, uh, and also hand over any relevant resources and files that you need to. So not only is it a really powerful tool for designers and developers, but also it makes ha that handover process so, so smooth. So here we are inside Wix Studio, and I'm just going to take you quickly around the app just so you can see the features that it offers you uh, before we create a new site. You start off with a dashboard that helps you with some really useful tutorials uh, and also allows you to see the most recent updates for the app. But then as we come down on the left hand side, you can see some of the things that you can build with Wix Studio. So sites. Your predominant use of the tool will probably be to build websites for your clients. You can also build custom, no code needed apps that you can then publish to the app store, a completely white label. So this can be anything from a fitness instructor's website to a fully functional shop that you can launch on the app store like any other app. Next, and this one is a really great tool for anyone who's interested in designing and developing templates to sell. This actually makes it really easy for you to do that right here in the app. So you can create brand new templates and share them and then you can effectively sell them and make money with Wix Studio. So this kind of has two benefits. On the one hand, you can create templates that can speed up your own workflow, but you can also then earn and sell those templates that could help other people to speed up their workflows too. Next is custom apps or Wix blocks. Now this is really cool. This is basically a way to be able to make widgets and custom kind of integrations that can be dragged and dropped into websites just taking things a little bit further than the, the usual components that Wix offers. So if you're into building plugins or if you're into building widgets, then this is a really great option for you. Next, we've got a section here just to help us deal with clients. So everything from delivering to your clients in a nice custom branded uh, portal to deliver the work to them through to getting feedback from your client to, to improve the sites and the designs that you've made for them. And the rest is all fairly straightforward ways to manage your billing and subscriptions and earnings and your ways to manage your subscriptions. As I said, let's get started by creating a brand new site. So here you're gonna get a few choices of how you want to start. You can start from a blank canvas and design entirely from new. You can use a template or you can use AI to help you generate a structure. We're gonna start from scratch. So when you open a blank site for the first time, you'll see that they've put some things in place to help you get started. So it comes with a header, a footer, and then a blank section just to help you start. To help you best understand the platform, I'm actually going to go ahead and delete all of this so that we completely start with nothing. So now we have a blank canvas to start with. Let's just talk about some of the ways that you can get started with adding your own elements to this design. So you can choose a starting point right from within the canvas. You can choose a design section. You can start with a grid layout, or you can add an element right there and then. And the way to do this is just come over onto the left hand side, click add elements, and you can just take a look at everything that they've got pre-built for you to drag and drop and customize if that's your approach that you would like to choose. So for example, we have some really professional designed hero sections that you can drag and drop and start customizing straight away. And what's more with Wix Studio, you have an AI tool behind all of this to help you make it responsive. So we're gonna start by building the above the fold sections. So that's gonna include our navigation bar and our hero section. And we're gonna do our best to avoid using any pre-designed sections just so you can see how to use Wix Studio completely from scratch. So let's start by setting up the container for the top section of the website so the entire hero section and navigation bar is going to have a picture in the background so let's set that up to begin with we're going to open the inspector just to have a little look at some of the settings now you can see i've got the section selected it's got the blue highlight around it so let's come over to the right hand side and add an image i've already uploaded some of these assets so if we go to site files you should find anything you've uploaded previously here if you haven't done that already then just nice and easy, upload media, and you'll find them in this place. So let's select our background image, change background. And now you can see the top section of the website now has this background image in its place. The next thing to think about is how the section is going to look on the page. So how to set up things like the height of the section uh, and how it's going to respond to different devices. So you'll see a section on the inspector on the right hand side here that says responsive behavior. This dictates how this section is going to resize and scale 
as the screen size changes. So you've got several options. You've got scale proportionally, which means that it's going to keep the exact same proportions as the page gets bigger and smaller. We've also got fixed height, which means that no matter what happens to the size of the screen, the height of that section shall remain the exact same. And then we also have fit to screen, which is going to stretch this out across the entire screen as well as the height. So this is going to fill the entire screen top to bottom and from left to right. And for our hero section, at least on desktop, this is exactly what we, what we want to do. So we want to stretch this out across the full height and full width of the device screen. So let's start adding in some of the layers and the detail to make this hero section come to life. To begin with, we want our navigation bar to be contained within this section. So let's come up to the add elements button and we're going to actually just start with a container. We're going to attach the container to the very top of the page. And in terms of the responsive behavior, we're going to set it now to relative width. What this means is that the height shouldn't change too much, but as we change the size of the browser, the width of the element is going to scale down with us. So we want relative width. We're then going to stretch this right across the page and reduce the height to somewhere that looks about right. We also don't want any background. So we're just going to reduce the opacity of our background to zero. So next, we're going to start adding the elements of our navigation bar. So with the navigation bar selected, I'm going to come up to the plus icon here, add elements. We're going to click and drag an image to our nav bar. And we're going to change the image to our logo. Click update. And then you can see we've got some weird things going on with sizing. So to begin with, the first thing I like to do is just click the settings cog and change the display mode from fill to fit. That just means we're going to be able to see the logo no matter what size we're dealing with. It is a little bit tall, so I'm just going to make that a little bit smaller. And I'm also just going to scale this down slightly just to somewhere that feels about right, I'd say about there. We'll then make sure this is in the center of the navigation bar and bring it right the way across to the left hand side of the screen. So now as the screen size changes, this is going to stick to the left hand side and you can see slightly that it's scaling. So as the page gets bigger, the logo is growing and as the page gets smaller, the logo is shrinking. So we want to make sure that we've set the responsive behavior on every individual layer. So let's select our logo, come over to the inspector on the right hand side and come down to responsive behavior where it's currently set to scale proportionally. What we want to do is just set this to fixed, which means the size should stay exactly the same. And we then can control the size on each individual breakpoint. So now, as you see, as I change the size of the screen, it's staying in place on the left hand side, but it's not changing in size, which is exactly what we want. So next, the navigation bar will need a menu. So let's again click on that plus icon. We're going to come down to menu and search horizontal menus. And then let's start with this nice plain one here. Let's click and drag and attach that to our navigation bar. We're going to move it over to the right hand side. We're going to leave a little bit of a gap and then we're going to click manage menu and we're going to edit the items that are going to be within this menu. Within manage menu, we can change the items that are included within this particular navigation menu. What's more, we can also save the menu that we are using so we can reuse it across different pages of our website. So here is manage menu. This little window is going to be a lifesaver for you. So what we can do here is create different menus for different areas on our website. Now you can see here, we've got this drop down that says manage site menus, and we've got the menu selected that says menu. What this means is if we set up a bunch of links in this menu, and then somewhere else on the website, we want to drop our navigation menu, we can select this menu again, and it's going to remember what links we want to display. That includes with a completely different style of navigation. So for example, if you wanted to go from a horizontal to a vertical on a different section of your website, you can make sure it has exactly the same links by selecting menu. Now, before we set up our menu, it might be best to give Wix Studio a better understanding of what pages we plan to have so that we can put this inside our menu. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up to the top bar, click on where it says home, come down to manage pages, and we're just going to add all of the pages that we plan to have in the final version of this website so that we can link to them from within the navigation bar. So we're going to click add new page, add, and then we can call it whatever we want. So I'm going to call this one features. I'm going to do this again for pricing and again for the get started page, which is going to give people instructions on how they can actually get started. So if we come back to our home page, we come back to our navigation menu and then the horizontal menu, we'll click manage menu, add item, and we can add all of our main pages by selecting them here and clicking apply. Now for me, and I think on most websites, it's becoming sort of standard practice for the logo itself to link to the home page and for the rest of the links over here to link to the other pages. So I'm going to actually remove home from this menu. So now we have the logo on the left hand side that we're going to link eventually to the home page. And then on the right hand side, we've got features, pricing 
and get started. So then we can use the inspector to design our navigation menu to look more like we want it to. So with the navigation menu selected, we can come over to the design section on the inspector and we can choose what we want to design. So we can choose to design the container for the menu or we can choose to design the menu items. From there, we can see what they look like normally on hover or if it's the current page. So what I'm going to go and do is make sure that on hover, the font color is set to our brand color. And actually we haven't done this yet, but we can go ahead and edit the site's color theme just so it makes it easier for us to use the colors and styles that we want to across our entire website without needing to change them every single time. And also then we can change them from one source and update that automatically across the site. So for now, all I'm gonna do is edit the primary brand color and keep everything else the same. So we've got a nice range of colors to use. And there we go. So let's come back to our navigation menu, select our items. We wanna say that we want to edit the menu items on hover, come down to text, change the color to our nice primary green. And then we'll say, current page, I prefer this just to stay black. So now what we've done is we've added the hero section, which now spreads across the width and height of the screen with a custom background. We've added a navigation bar to the top with the logo on the left hand side, and then the horizontal menu on the right hand side. And we've made sure that everything's set up so that we can change the size of our screen and everything responds. So if at any point you want to preview your site just to see how it's looking so far, you can come up to the eye icon that says preview on the toolbar at the top, we'll click this and you can see a live version of your site. So you can test the things like the hover effects we've worked on and also resizing just to see how things look. So to round off this first episode, we are gonna finish off the hero section by adding a new container with our headline and our call to action button. So again, let's click the plus icon. We're gonna add a container to the center of our hero section. And inside that container, I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. We'll sort out the responsiveness probably more towards the second episode uh, or just before we finish off here. So we're just going to eyeball it for now, just make it the right size just to get the content in. We're going to come up to the plus icon again, add our title and one more time, add button. So next we're going to go ahead and change the copy. So I've added the copy. I'm now going to resize the text box till everything looks good. I'm also going to make sure that the text is centered by coming down to the alignment and clicking center align. And I'm going to do the same for the button. I'm just going to change the copy to get started. So we're going to click change text and then type in get started. Next, we're going to style both of these. So I think to start with, we'll make this headline just a little bit bigger. So under the design section, we're going to set the font size to somewhere closer to say 64 pixels. And then we're just going to set the spacing and sizing of the boxes just to allow for that text to be laid out nicely. Next, we're going to change the design of the get started button by changing the background to our primary green. I also like giving it some roundness. So let's click on the corners section and for the border radius, let's set it something like eight pixels all the way around the edge. And if you don't want them to all be the same, if you wanted to ever change one and not the other, then just select this button in the middle here, which is currently linking them all together. Now for me, I like my buttons to be quite big. So I'm going to make this a little bit taller a little bit wider, and then I'm gonna make sure that the text is just a little bit bigger. So we're gonna to go to 16 pixels, and I'm gonna make it bold. Okay, so we've got our text and our button inside our container, which I now think is a little bit too tall. I also wanna make sure that our container doesn't have a background color, whereas at the moment you can see it's got that kind of light gray. We're just gonna set this to completely see-through. Gonna make sure again that it's in the center and the middle. And there's actually one more graphic that I wanna to add to this hero section. So I'm gonna make a little bit more room going to click on the plus icon, add an image, click and drag that into our container, change the image to our little graphic that we've got here of a team. And then again, change this from fill to fit just so we can see the entire graphic, no matter what the shape of the containing box. And we'll just make this a little bit smaller so we can see it nicely. Next, I'm going to arrange everything again inside this container just so that we can see it all and it's nicely laid out. And then one final time, I'm just going to reposition everything just to make sure it's in the middle. And there we go. We've got all of the content in that we want for our above the fold top section of our website design. We've got our navigation bar. We've got our stylized hero section and we've got our nice big call to action button underneath a big headline. And for now, in terms of responsiveness, as you can see, as I make our window bigger and smaller, that center point of our hero section is just going to scale proportionally. We might want to change this, but I think this is something I'm going to look at in the next episode. But for now, here's our hero section. We've got our navigation bar set up and our main call to action ready to go.